wonderful that this day has arrived. Um, I, I was a developer, as Bonnie said, in part of my life, and uh, you have to be optimistic to be a real estate developer. The phone won't ring for 20 years and then it rings. And uh, that's a little bit the story of this, as many have said, that uh, it's finally come together in this blaze of energy and families involved and so on. So it's thrilling to see this special place that Abby and I are, are especially privileged to have really the last house in the Kingman's book, the only one left standing. Um, I've been coming down since 1964, and I fell in love with the land then, and I've never lost my awe of it. It is an amazing place that stretches from shore up to the hills. It has cliffs, and forests, and woods, and at the same time, as many have said, as Marnie said, so much history, so many people. There's, there's not only today are we saving the land, but we're preserving the history of the McKinnons, the Beatons, the MacArthur's, Chester Stark, the McPhee's. All their stories are there, which is so wonderful. Um, the land really has been protected, as many have said, uh, first by the indigenous people who fished and hunted in it. Uh, then by the pioneers mentioned, then by the landowners, mostly American, over many years, and now by the Nature Trust. So when we arrived down a couple of weeks ago, I said to Abby, the land looks different now because it's safe. But then Derek doesn't look the same. It's going to be there, you know, forever. So it's just wonderful. I, I just want to call out a few people that have been important to me. Uh, Jim St. Clair, who many of you know who couldn't be here today, uh, Jim really uh, taught me the local history of all the families there, of the cellar holes, and the importance of McKinnon's Brook. Uh, also, as been mentioned many times, Gene Rosner, who, when I was a 20-year-old and didn't really have long-term thinking in my quiver, she taught me the importance of conservation, and she fought so hard showed you what it is to fight and put in energy uh, to preserve land. Also, Ian Sherman, who is here today, with his wife Ruth, who built the 25-kilometer trail network, which is just an amazing piece of work. <laughs> Ian had the vision that the trail network itself could become a proselytizing tool when we didn't really have full permission <laughs> across <laughs> all of the various properties, we just sort of said, let's ask for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> so he is key to this whole effort. And then Nadine Hunt, who I think is going to say a few words, is here today. We <laughs> all volunteers for the Cape Babu Trail Club who have maintained the trails and kept them open through various infestations and fire hazards and so on. I want to also do a shout out to the McDonald family of Mabu, who Billy McDonald and Roddy McDonald, who worked with me for over two, three decades to keep the area open and accessible to manage the forest. They were hugely helpful through the efforts to save this land. So finally, I, I think I'd just like to say also that one of the great things about this partnership with the Nature Trust is that we can show that land conservation and economic growth and jobs for our people can coexist and can help each other over time. I think our long-term hope is that this Mabu Highlands conservation area becomes a signature part of what Mabu is and will draw people here from around the province and from Canada and beyond. So thank you very much for all helping me make this possible. I'll just add a few words. I feel quite humbled as the newbie in this group. I've only been coming down for 15 years. But I've heard all about the dedicated generations of people who've had a vision for this land, and I feel very privileged to be here today. I want to say I've been thinking so much about the stewardship task ahead of us 
and so I'm sure the Nature Trust and all of you have been thinking. And I fought for so long, and, and the rhetoric in my mind is how much the land needs us and its stewardship. But what I've learned in the past couple of days, it's that we need the land. It's us who needs the land. And I think if there's one thing we can do to keep this going, it's to instill in the next generation the sense of how important it is to have an emotional and physical attachment to the land, and this land in particular, because it is uniquely preserved. So that's my vision and hope for the future and the present. And as David says, it actually pays in the end to be an optimist. Thank you very much.